Welcome to this quick tutorial on how to use TypeMonkey with animated typefaces. It's a lot easier than you think, so let's get right into it. First of all, in TypeMonkey, and I'm not going to go into all the features because there's other tutorials for that, you can just simply type in what you want it to do. There's a couple special commands that you can see here by clicking on the star icon. And essentially, it's that I put brackets around certain words. So essentially, here I'm saying TypeMonkey and animated typefaces go together like a split banana and ice cream. Uh, so I want split banana and ice cream to be together, which is why I put the brackets. Um, I changed some settings here. I made the style of the animation to be randomized and to be fast. And then I changed the camera to be uh, smooth, stop and go. And I made the auto frame to be loose. If you go any tighter, like medium or tight, it will zoom in on the individual words, like for example, cream. And I wanted to be able to just see it all together, which is the reason I did that. And I'm going to use um, a piece of song that I got from premiumbeat.com here just to um, have it uh, sync kind of together. So uh, I can see how long this, this music is. So I'm just going to set my work area to end right around the end of the music. Then the next thing we need to do is decide which font we want to use. Uh, we're going to be using Fat Frank animated font and Fat Frank comes with a static font, which I've preloaded in my system. So I'm going to use Fat Frank. So I just basically set Fat Frank um, first. And then instead of uh, setting the color for the font here, you want to set the color in the color palette section here. Um, another thing, which is a cool little tip and another tool that we sell on a scripts is this color library, which allows you to import um, cooler Adobe cooler uh, color palettes. So if we go over here to Adobe cooler and we go to explore, we'll go ahead and search for banana since that seems to be a good topic <laughs> and there's just like literally probably millions but definitely thousands of different color palettes that have been submitted by users and so you just pick one that you like like here say bananas so I just hit download and then once I've downloaded it I can just hit here load ASC and there it is bananas ASC and it just loads up that color palette so I can then just use this to assign the different colors that are in the palette so that that one, uh, sorry, instead of pure white, it has this sort of like off white, which is kind of nice. So then once we've loaded all the colors into the palette, all you have to do is hit do it. Here's a tip, by the way, if you switch away from After Effects, it's actually going to work a lot faster than if you just let After Effects work. And the reason for that is that when After Effects is the uh, frontmost application, it tries to continually update the comp as the script is working. So it's better to just switch off, let it just not try to update. It works a lot faster. Anyway, so here you go. It's created our little animation. And you can basically, there's other uh, tools that we sell for um, syncing audio to different beats. But I felt this was simple enough. You can just kind of like, you know, see the little things. And you can just literally move the, you know, the little... Um, markers so that things happen how you want them to to work so we'll uh just briefly do all that and obviously you know when things want to happen sooner but it's pretty straightforward how you want it to um to work all right so now that i've just moved these markers we can just preview it very quickly keep in mind this is just type monkey Well, you can already see that this is this because I chose randomize. This already turned out differently than the uh, the one that I had done previously. So if you're not happy with the result, you can just basically say undo it, and it gives you this option to save the type monkey marker layer. Because I already sunk it up with the music, I'm gonna go ahead and say yes. I wanted to save it, and then the next time I run it, and I'm just gonna run it again because it's randomized. I'm gonna use this marker sync button. And just make sure that you select that saved marker layer in your in your timeline. And now it's going to just actually use those markers as opposed to create a new marker. So now we can just run it again. Again, switch off. And you can see it's going to work much faster. So there, it's done. 
The one thing, for example, I wanted to do is replace animated with an animated font. So to do that, I've already imported the Fat Frank and Amelie animated typefaces. You only need to bring in the one for your version. In the case of Fat Frank, um, the CS6 one works in CC, which is what I'm using at the currently. <clears throat> and to set this font, what you want to do is you want to create a new comp the same size as your main comp. So our main comp here is 1280 by 720. And we're going to create a new comp that's the same size. And I'm going to call this animated because this is going to be the word animated. Now notice how it created the comp inside of the Amelie folder. You need to be careful of that because this folder structure is, is something that characteristic needs to be in a certain structure. So just make sure you pull that, that comp out of that folder structure. Uh, so now once I'm here, I'm going to use characteristic, which is another tool that we have, to set it. And the way it works is we're going to set this particular one in Fat Frank. So I'm going to open Fat Frank, and I'm trying to choose uh, Fat Frank 1. And the reason that there's several versions of this is that it's just as a convenience for you to be able to have different color settings for each font. And I'm going to go into that in a second. So I'm going to go ahead and you select the 101 that you want to work with. And then here in the typeface folder, you just hit set. So see how it's going to set it now to Fat Frank 01. And then if I open Fat Frank 01 and then open the controller, I can move forward here and see it draw on the A. I can control if I hit this uh, control layer. Oops, let's see. Say controller, sorry. And I look at the effects control for this. It lets me control the colors. So mainly I'm interested in the final color, which I want it to be the off-white so i'm just gonna go ahead and select this and that now makes it off the off-white and all these colors are the same i could go ahead and change these if i wanted to i could uh you know it's this yellow choose to be this yellow for example um that's pretty straightforward and once you've done that in the controller and this is again why you have different versions because each version has its own controller so you can basically set the colors for each one of these different instances of fat frank so once I've set it in the controller, I go back to my animated comp and then I just go ahead here in the text and I write animated. Um, I'm going to go ahead and <clears throat> leave the animate checkbox on, but I'm going to explain what it does if you do not. So if you have it on, it lets you change some settings in the comp after it's set the font. If you have it turned off, then whatever settings you have here, mainly the stagger, um, but also this sort of kerning and, and stuff, um, it's kind of baked in. So if you feel like you're going to want to either animate it or kind of play with it in the comp, leave animate turned on. Otherwise, you can just turn it off. For example, in this case, I know I want exactly these settings, so I can just leave it turned off. And then I just go ahead and hit create. So you can see that it now quickly um, set the word animated as the animated font, which is really fantastic. You can see here with a two frame stagger. Um, so the, the next thing we're going to do is first, if you're an anal person like myself, you want to see that like I want to tighten up the kerning here between the A and Ted. So I'm just going to select the last three letters and literally just scoot it in. Oops, maybe not so much. So, just, uh, and then maybe scoot it in the A a little bit. Um, all right, so there you go. So that just fix quickly fix the kerning. And then you select the null. If you click on this source name, layer name, you can see that there's a control null. And I'm going to hit S for scale. And I'm just going to scale it up so that it's basically the size of the comp. I'm also just going to, I'm essentially just making it utilize as much as the comp as possible. Um, and then that's it. And so you can see here. So now if I look at the effects control for um, the control layer, you're going to see that there's nothing there. And I'll show you when we use this animate how that's different. Okay, so now we go back into our type monkey comp and you can see that there's only four layers. That's because by default, it turns on this shy button and it hides all of these text layers. But because we're going to want to actually replace one, you go ahead and hit the shy button and it's going to show you all the layers. So we just look for the animated one, which is here. It's currently locked, but you can select the control layer. And then we're going to go back to our comp and bring in this animated comp and just bring it in here just underneath the animated control layer. 
And then the first thing you're going to do is just to toggle these switches is make it 3D because a type monkey, everything is 3D. Then I'm going to parent it to the control layer. So the animated control layer. And then you can see that it's been rotated. So I'm going to hit P for position, R for rotation and S for scale. I'm holding down the shift key and I'm just going to zero out the position so that it's basically attached to the control layer. And you can see that the orientation here is set to 270. So I'm just going to zero out that as well. So now it's straight. So now I need to scale it down. I'm just going to go ahead and scale it down and move it over. And I'm just going to roughly match the, um, you know, the, the position. So um, I was incorrect in setting that end color to be white. I actually wanted it to be that darker brown. So if I go back into that control layer, so the controller, I can go and just change that last color to this sort of darker brown. So now when it finishes drawing, and so you can go back here and you can see, oh, sorry, it's a different color, but you get the idea. So, okay. Now I can just go ahead and turn off the type version of it. And there we go. We have this one again. If you wanted to go in and fix it, the kerning some more, you can go ahead and do it. And then the last thing you want to do is you want to actually drag the layer forward so that it starts animating kind of, you know, maybe a little bit late later here so that, you know, so I'm just dragging so you can see it, how it's basically animating on. And then you kind of want it just to be done before typefaces comes on. So let's go ahead and just preview this. I'm going to set my end work area here. All right. So do you see how easy that was? All right. So now we're going to basically set typefaces in Amelie, which is just another animated font. Again, you can choose however you want to do it. This is just for demonstration's sake. So again, we're going to go ahead and create a new comp, making sure it's not in one of the font folder structures. So this one's going to be called typefaces. And so now I'm going to switch to using Amelie. So I'm going to go and choose Amelie 01. I'm going to set that in correct directions as the typeface to use. And in this case, I'm going to here type typefaces. Um, I am going to turn on the animate checkbox so you can see the difference and just hit create. Oh, select the composition first literally so you want this sort of like yellow outline to be around it all right so now as you can see everything doesn't look staggered because it's being staggered using expression so again if I hit this layer name now when I select the null the typeface is null and I show the effects now we have all these controls so if I move forward here it's just uh, kind of go in the middle um, we can adjust the tracking so dynamically um, you can also adjust the stagger, which is set to two frames. But so let's say, for example, I wanted it to be three frames. I don't know. Um, it's just going to stagger it off a little. That just means it's going to take a little bit longer to to complete. And then the same way I can just go forward and I can adjust the kerning. So I'm going to select the A through the end and I'm just going to move this in a little tighter and then unselect the A now and just move the CES a little tighter. So you can always. Sorry, there we go. You can always adjust the kerning by hand. And then once that's adjusted, this tracking here still works pretty nicely. So you could have this stuff animating. You know, you can keyframe all of these things. So I don't know. Let's try that. Why, why not? Let's just have it uh, start at this at zero. And then as it goes forward, it's going to move out like this. Uh, we can also move the null so that there's just more space. And then maybe scale it up a little bit. So I'm hitting S on the on the scale null, just to, so that you obviously don't want it to go off the edge. All right. So now that that's done, we'll go back here and do the same exact process, which is just bring in this anime. Uh, sorry, typefaces comp, put it underneath the typefaces control, and we're going to make it 3D. We're going to parent it to the control layer, and then zero out the position. So zero zero and zero. Then we're also going to zero out the rotation. And then we're going to scale it down and just kind of make it match the position of the old one. By the way, um, you can, um, you can do, uh, 
Command R or Control R to get the rulers, and then I find that it helps to just bring these rulers up so that you can, you know, kind of line up where because Type Monkey does a really good job of, you know, making sure everything is kind of in its right place and everything. Um, one thing we forgot to do was set the colors here for, so let's just go kind of close enough. All right, so now we can turn off the original type layer. And let's go into the Amelie controller for Amelie 01 and change. Um, Amelie has a couple more controls. You can actually change the line width. So let's just make it uh, double the width. So instead of 20, it'll be 40. And then the um, line width 2 is the, the width of these, these little lines. So let's go ahead and double that as well to 20, mainly because together with fans frank it maybe needs to be a little bit thicker and then finally we can change the colors so we'll just change the final color to be one of these guys maybe this this brown one i don't know and then you can change the other color too if you want it to be <coughs> okay so let's go ahead and zoom back so now and then the last thing we also want to just slide it forward so that it starts animating right around the marker so Main thing we want it to do is be done. Yeah, that seems pretty good. So, like, here we go. So, if we wanted it to be done a frame sooner, you can go back into um, the typefaces comp and here change that stagger frames to be two. You can actually, this doesn't have to be full numbers. We could actually enter 2.5, for example, which is really cool. Uh, so, you could have really fine control over how you do this. So, now it's just done a little bit sooner. And that's it. So now let's go ahead and preview this. So there you have it. I hope you can see how quickly and easily it is to use animated typefaces with TypeMonkey um, and as well as other tools to you know, get your colors to be synchronized with Adobe Cooler and whatnot. So hope you hope you found this tutorial helpful and I'll let the rest of this be the exercise for you. Thanks a lot.